I'm Tabitha Goldstorff and I'm on a mission to find the data science and AI experts who are willing to talk data to me. Do you wonder if your phone's listening to you? I do. After a cup of tea and a conversation about needing a holiday, suddenly adverts for Italian villas are everywhere. And I think, was the internet listening? I'm meeting with Barry Aitken to understand what's going on and what our rights are in these situations. Barry, thank you so much for coming. I have a lot of questions, but the first is, is my phone listening to me? Well, I guess the short answer is it might be, ah? but it kind of depends what you have on your phone. So it might not be listening to you in the way that you're thinking about in terms of um, advertising. Um, it doesn't need to for that. It has enough information about you based on the data it collects about you from what you're doing online, um, from your browsing history, from your social media posts. It can figure out what to advertise to you through those ways. Um, but if you have things like voice assistants or voice activated apps, it might be listening to you through them. So what's an example of those voice assistants? So if you have something like Siri um, yeah. or Google Assistant, something which um, yeah, is voice activated, it has a, it has a, a, a wake word that, um, that it, you say that wake word and it will turn on, it will activate and it will follow your commands. Um, but of course, in order to hear that wake word, it has to be listening to be able to yeah. pick up your voice and to know when to kind of switch on and when to activate. Um, so yes, there's always a chance um, if I say seriously, Siri might turn on and record a snippet of what we have to say, um, which may or may not be a big issue. It might not be a big issue if it records a bit of our discussion here today. Maybe a bit more of an issue if your doctor says seriously and it records something or uh, something in the bedroom or at home. Uh, so whether or not the extent to which that's something that you worry about it might be different in different contexts. Yes, and if I was to worry, how would I know which apps are listening and who's passing my data on and, and what happens if they've heard things? Yeah, so there's some, uh, so things like, like Siri, uh, like Google Assistant, you can, you can log in and you can see uh, a list of the recorded files and, mm. and when it's turned on or what's been recorded. So you can check what's there. Um, but it's also really important to check which other apps might have permission to access mm. your microphone. So if you look in your security settings, if you look at your permissions for apps, you can get a list of which apps have uh, permission to access your microphone, which are permission to access your camera. Um, and it's really important to check that and review that because we all we all do it. We all you know download apps and click accept uh, without necessarily reading what it is that we're accepting. Um, so it's really important to go back through that and review and think, uh, does this app really need my microphone? Am I really happy with the idea that potentially it could be recording something. Uh, and if you're not, then uh, yeah, maybe review review and remove those permissions. Yeah. And what do these uh, apps do once they have that information on us? Well, they might do different things with it. So in some cases, it might be fairly innocuous. In some cases, it might be uh, quite appropriate that, that they have access uh, in order to you know do what, what it is that they're doing. So if it's something like a, a voice assistant or something like a, a messenger or a chat thing, it might mm. be appropriate for them to have access to your microphone to do that. In other cases, it's much less clear why they would want access to your microphone or what they would do with that. Mm. Um, that data might be being used to kind of develop products to test you know accuracy or, um, or it might be being used for marketing or for advertising. Mm. But as I said at the beginning, most of the stuff that most of the concerns around how this personalized or targeted advertising is coming is more likely to be coming from other sorts of data and other sorts of information that's been collected on your phone. So we're giving them our information regardless of what they hear, you know, regardless of what we're saying. We're giving the information just as we spend time on the internet anyway. Yeah, different kinds of information. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like how targeted advertising might might reach you, that might come through through data that is collected from like our browsing history. So what websites we go on, it might come through what we do on social media. So what mm. we interact with, say on Facebook or Instagram, what we like, what we, uh, what friends we connect with, um, and what kinds of content we interact with, and all of that builds up to to give uh, companies and advertisers a really clear picture of. of you know, what our interests are, what our preferences are, and what kinds of adverts might be most appealing to us. Right. Um, and on social media, it's not just about kind of what we as individuals kind of reveal about ourselves, but also through our connections and through the people who we're friends with on social media, mm. there are assumptions made about things that, that one of our 
friends might have liked or, or might have been interested in mm. and whether we might also be interested in that ourselves. Mm. So the information isn't just information that we're really about ourselves as individuals, but is also coming through social networks mm. and social media. Why aren't more people aware of this? I mean, we, we all heard about GDPR when it launched, but I'm not sure I really knew or anyone really knew exactly what rights we had. Yeah, well, I might be in a fairly niche group of kind of passionate <laughs> yes, lovers are. of GDPR. Um, I think GDPR is amazing. Uh, and for most people, like you say, GDPR was something that we yeah. kind of associate with clogged up inboxes around, you know, when it was first launched and, and it's something we associate with kind of yeah. pop up like cookie notifications and mm. privacy statements. But GDPR is amazing. Um, GDPR gives us lots of rights over our data. Um, so, for example, we have the right to know what data is collected about us. We have the right to request any organisation that's collecting our data to, to show us what is there. We also have the, the right to um, correct accuracies or to request that data to be deleted, for it to be destroyed. Um, and we have the right for an explanation if a decision has been made about us based on that data. So if data is used to create profiles, which might shape the way we access service or, or determine how certain services are made more or less accessible to us, we have the right to an explanation to that and we have a right to contest that. Um, and importantly, if we're not happy, if we don't get ad adequate um, explanations or if we feel that our data has been collected or used inappropriately, uh, we can complain. We should complain to the ICO, yeah. the Information Commissioner's Office. Um, yeah. and, and there are hefty penalties for companies who don't mm. use our data appropriately. Yeah. This is really good, and these are really good developments in terms of the rights that we have as individuals. But people need to know that, and yeah. they need to act on it. So we need people to be much more um, aware of those rights, and really to make complaints, and to, to insist that our data is handled appropriately, and only in the ways that we're happy mm. with. Do you have some advice for people? I mean, it sounds quite nerve-wracking to you know, message the ICO. What do I do? To, do I email them? You can email them. There's lots yeah. of ways to contact the ICO. Um, and the ICO website has a lot of materials that are very kind of accessible, yeah. they're very um, yeah, they do a very good job of explaining these things and, and explaining what your rights are, but also how you can act on them. You don't need to write a kind of formal legal letter. Uh, you just need to set out what your concerns are um, and uh, yeah, what your concerns are and, and send that to the ICO. And there's a lot of advice on, on how to go about doing that. That's People cool. shouldn't be scared to do that. Great. Well, thank you so much. I feel like I've learned a huge amount. I hope everyone else has as well. And um, I'm sure I'll have some more questions for you soon. Thank you.